Hey everyone, it's good to be with y'all tonight. Cassie and I are we're uh, talking um, this past week, and we thought, you know, uh, we we need to do something special for the ladies. You know, we had everything set up and ready to go for the uh, for the exhale conference. All you know, the door prizes were bought. Everything was ready, and um, the crawfish was set up. Everything was ready, and then it just all kind of came to a screeching halt. And so we thought, well, well, we'll just we'll set everything aside, and we'll wait a little while, and this will blow over in a in a couple of weeks or whatever. And so now we're eight weeks later, and and so Cassie and I were like, well, maybe we should touch base with the ladies just to reconnect with them, spend some time with you ladies. Um, we, as soon as we get the green light to go, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna reschedule yes. the, the conference and, um, we won't be able to have crawfish, but we're gonna figure out something that'll be special and that'll be fun for you ladies. Uh, we still have lots of door prizes to give away. <laughs> if you look behind me, uh, I, we purchased this, uh, sign, uh, this picture. Uh, that says exhale on it. I was so excited whenever I found it and I scooped it up. And this was months even before we even started planning our initial exhale conference. And so I thought, wow, this would be a great door prize. It'd be something cute to hang maybe above your, your tub or maybe in your quiet spot that you like to read or pray or whatever. It would be a great little gift. So we're looking forward to giving this thing away yeah. whenever we get a chance um, to come together as a, and see your faces yes. and, and hopefully we can hug your necks. Yes. Like that's what I miss the yes, most is the, the, be able to hug the necks, yes. you know? And yes. so, um, so anyway, we're, uh, we're excited to be with you tonight and we're thankful that they gave us this space, uh, for Wednesday night. Um, so we just want to, um, welcome you. It's, we know that we kind of have advertised that it's a women's, a little women's time, but I know that there's probably some, some men watching too, and even some kids. And so we're, we're welcoming you too, and we're glad that you can be a part of it and that you can spend this time with us. You know, this word is, is not just for ladies. It's for men. It's for children. It's for all of us. And so it crosses all those, um, all those boundaries. And so, so we're excited just to be able to share, mm -hmm. uh, with y'all tonight. And so, yeah. Um, we're, um, just looking forward to just letting all the stuff that's in our heart out to you tonight. And so, um, thank you for joining us. Yes. And we, we hope that, that what we share with you tonight is, is helpful. Um, not even just in this time of, of staying home and this quarantine, but that you can take it really for the rest of your life. And so, uh, the thing that we wanted to share with y'all tonight is, it's not anything new. It's not anything that you haven't heard of. It's not anything that we created in our, in our own lives or it just kind of like, this is, this is not new material. And, um, but I think it's important that, especially now that we revisit it. Mm -hmm. And, um, so tonight we want to just talk to you a little bit about awareness, not just any kind of awareness, but awareness of the presence of God in the present moment. You know, because of the recent pandemic that's visited us, we've had to learn how to be more mindful of those people around us who are maybe um, more vulnerable to the virus, right? We've had to learn to practice social distancing. We've had to even learn how to wash our hands in a more detailed way. I mean, the commercials <laughs> of how to wash your hands and how long to wash your hands is just, you know, and so we've, we've learned to be more intentional and, um, and more mindful of, of things around us and the things that we do and the people around us. Right, mm -hmm, Cassie? That's right. That's so right. Um, and even, even within our homes, we've had, we've had to learn how to do that. And so, and so while this, this is good to learn awareness about the pandemic, how much more do we need to learn the practice of awareness when it comes to God's presence in our lives? Mm -hmm. I thought of the word mindful. Whenever I think of the word mindful, if I'm a, I'm a definition girl. I like to look up <laughs> definitions. And so I was like, what does mindfulness really mean? And so I looked it up and it says, the state of being aware of something, 
achieved by focusing awareness on the present moment. Mm. That's what mindfulness is. Being aware, focusing awareness on the present moment. And so, you know, we've been made aware of the pandemic, right? Very and so, much so. <laughs> now we can be more mindful of the precautions. Yeah. So I'm learning that to be mindful of something, we must first be aware of something, right. right, Cassie? Yeah, that's right. And um, I think about, uh, I thought about Moses, and I know I've shared this a million times, well, not a million, but a lot of times with, with ladies in classes and stuff of, of my favorite uh, example of awareness, and that's whenever Moses was um, was in the field tending the flock or whatever, and and um, and it's the story of the burning bush when God spoke to him through the burning bush, and um, and all of a sudden Moses looked and he saw a burning bush. He was made aware of the bush, and uh, and that it was burnt, it was on fire, but it was not burning up, and so. He could have just said, Oh, wow, look, that's pretty cool. I've never seen a bush on fire that's not burning up. Let me go back to my sheep or whatever it is he was doing. And, but the scripture talks about that when Moses attended the bush, when he paid attention to the book, uh, the bush, he wasn't just, um, aware. He wasn't just made of aware of it, but he actually put action into his awareness when he attended the bush, when he walked up to the bush, that's when God began to speak to him and tell him what he wanted him to do for the ne- for the people of Israel and what God was going to do and how he was going to re- rescue them. And so that mindfulness, that, that, uh, that, uh, putting action into your awareness. So what is awareness? Awareness is not only being made aware of something, Awareness is the act of being present in the moment. The act of being present in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just like, hey, Cassie, and I make her aware of something. Yeah, that's just her noticing something. But when we're aware of something, we put effort into it. Awareness takes effort. It requires intentionality. It, uh, It takes concentration and focus, mm-hmm. like a leaning in. Mm-hmm. I've learned that that has been very helpful in my life when visiting with people or when uh, ministering to people or just when fellowshipping with people, that whenever I lean forward and look at them in the eyes, like a leaning in, I concentrate and I focus, I can actually be more aware of, of what they're saying to me and what they're trying to communicate to me. But um, again, awareness, it takes a slowing down. It takes patience. Mm -hmm. It takes waiting. It's it's not allowing distraction or preoccupation to hijack the moment. So true. Cassie, um, Cassie had a, a, was, we were sharing about this just before, uh, before we got into the message itself and Cassie, uh, shared something that I thought was really good. And so I want to let her chime in and share. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think right now is, you know, we want to invite you to do just that right now. Like we can practice that right now. You know, I know, I know when I'm watching the videos at home, sometimes I'm cooking, sometimes I'm able to just sit there and pay attention. Um, But I want to invite you to really lean in tonight. Really lean in and pay attention. You know, maybe just tell the kids, hey, here, have a book. Give them their food. You know, like whatever you got to do. And just really take a moment to lean in and, and be aware and and see what God wants to do. Focus. I know that's hard for me whenever you have other people in the house. But I just want to say, hey, let's let's take a minute tonight, right now, and lean in and listen and, and practice it. Yeah, you know? It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. So, you know, awareness is basically as simple as this. It's paying attention to what you're paying attention to. Yeah. yeah. It's it's awareness is saying, I'm here and I hear you. Mm-hmm. It's not just you're there. You know, if you uh have you ever uh, told someone or even had the thought um you're you're here but you're not present. <laughs> like yeah. And you wonder if they're even listening to you. 
Now, don't don't throw anybody under the bus and say, <laughs> yes, pray for this person in my life because they are unaware of my presence or, you know, oh, my kids are this. Don't don't start putting that in the feed right now. OK, <laughs> but I want you to just think about that. I mean, y- you you probably visited with someone or you were talking to someone and then all of a sudden you realize you're saying about, you're saying something to them, but it's not. It's not reaching the other side. <laughs> no. Like it's just kind of stopping short of of their ears and just kind of falling to the wayside, right? right? right. <laughs> and so so they're here, they're there, but they're not present. And um and and honestly, the question would be, have you ever been guilty of that yourself? And mm-hmm. I think that we could probably all say yes to that mm-hmm. question that we have been guilty of being um, being there, but not being present, not paying attention to someone, not paying attention to what we're paying attention to. And when you learn the practice of awareness, you all of a sudden learn how to see detail and point out detail. You can really see uh, underneath the surface of maybe what's going on Mm -hmm. in someone's life Mm -hmm. or even what's going on underneath the surface of your own life, specifically when you're in spending time with God, you know, God sees below the surface of our lives. Mm -hmm. And and that's what's cool about him. And he wants to communicate those things to us. But sometimes we're so unaware of that that he's looking behind underneath the surface that we don't see underneath the surface of what's going on inside of us. And so it's important that um, that we learn um, awareness. You know, we are a highly distracted society, right? Mm-hmm. We are unaware of how unaware we really are. Um, we have our cell phones. We have social media. We have TV. We have computer. The list goes on and on and on. Right, yeah. Cassie? Yeah, you know, it makes me think of a, a, a story, you know, distraction at its finest. Mm-hmm. And some of you... Um, whether you're a woman or a man, if you clean house, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I can remember one time and I'm in the middle of the day. Kids are at school. I'm by myself. So really, there shouldn't have been too much distractions. I'm uh, unloading the dishwasher. So I'm drying the dishes. And then I'm like, oh, I need to go to the restroom. So I go back, go to the restroom, and then I see, oh, man, that needs to be wiped. And so I wipe something, then I'm like, oh, man, those clothes on the floor, y'all know, y'all know, okay, you get the clothes on the floor, you go put, well, I might as well put a load wash in. So you put the the load of clothes wash in, and then your phone rings, so you answer your phone. Well, after you have this 30-minute conversation, you look at your phone and realize you didn't respond to a text. So then you start responding to the text, which makes you think of something else, and then you're thirsty. So you go back to the kitchen, half of the cabinets are open, your dishwasher's open, and y'all, like seriously, this is what happened. I had left my towel in a cup on the dishwasher. Like, I just, this kind of stuff, I get distracted really easy, and I know I'm not the only one, so whenever we're talking about distraction, that just that's, that's what it makes me think of, and it happens all too often, yeah. to, to be quite honest. Yes. Um, not only in that way, but in, you know, in other ways in, in life. Yeah. You know? So true. Yeah. So true. And, and that, that, that kind of snowball effect mm-hmm. really carries over into our prayer time and our, what we call, I call, I call quiet, not so quiet time with the Lord, right? <laughs> right? So think about this. We start off in our, in our favorite spot. Yes. We're in prayer with God. We're worshiping, we're praying, we're reading our Bible, and we start praying to God, Lord, I just thank you for this day. I just, I just surrender my life to you. I just love you so much. And, um, like, Lord, I just, and then you start listing your prayer needs, and then you're like, Lord, you know, I have, I need this, 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 touch this, so and so, help me with this, help me with my patience, Lord, because I have a list of things to do, um, in the house, and I'm feeling so overwhelmed, and if I don't get up and, uh, you know, get this done and then this done and this done. And then all of a sudden (laughs) your mind gets seduced away from your time with God. And then you go from thinking about God to thinking about the list of things that you need to do. And then maybe something else happens where, like Cassie said, your phone rings and then you pick that up and and then your kids come or your husband comes or or they're not even a part of the picture. You just like, (laughs) you just snowballing 
you really didn't need much help from any significant <laughs> others to help right. you snowball. Right. And so then the next thing you know, you've abandoned ship with mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. And he, you left, you leave him sitting there going, what, what happened here? Like we were having such a good time. Yeah. And so, and so then like God's like, well, okay then. And so that does, it happens in our quiet time. Um, so although we know that God is there, uh, although we know that we're there, we're praying, we're reading our Bible, he's speaking to us, we can still leave our time with him the same, the same way that we entered it, overwhelmed and under-transformed, right, Cassie? Right, right that's so true. And, you know, I, I've been guilty of that. That's definitely happened to me many times. In the same scenario that she said, that's what happens. You start thinking about what you need to do, or you start praying for a certain person, and you're like, well, maybe I need to call them. Maybe I need to text them and encourage them. And all of a sudden, the focus goes off of God and onto other things and other people. And, you know, I like the words she used, overwhelmed and under transformed. So overwhelmed, I'm a definition girl, Mm. too. Um, Awesome. And so it means very or, or... Bury, B-U-R-Y, I say words crazy all the time, but bury or drown beneath a huge mass, like wow. overwhelmed burden. And basically, under transformed means to not really be changed. Yeah. And so what happens, like she said, we go into our time with the Lord and we're, we're ready to lay our burdens down. We're ready to have Him come and refresh us. Well, but what happens is we get distracted. Yes. We go off and start thinking about things, letting worries come in. And we literally can leave the, that moment, whether it's like five minutes or 30 minutes, we can leave that moment feeling more burdened yeah. than we did when we first started. And the problem with that that makes me think of is then we think it's not important. Well, I don't need to have time with the Lord because really what happens is it doesn't work. I end up getting more distracted. It t- it's, it's just a waste of my time. And I can't tell you how many people I have talked to who have literally said that. Like it, reading my Bible and spending time with the Lord, it doesn't really do much for me. And and this is why. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we we get distracted. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's what that makes me think of. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. And I've just thought of that when you uh, something that I've heard and said many times whenever you were sharing that, that uh, we can read our Bible, we can listen to, read books about God, we can get all this information being put in, but but we uh, tend to be a society of being over-informed and under-transformed. Yes. And it's because yes. we, uh, we're, not, we're not going past that surface level of the things that are just kind of coming into our mind and not getting into our heart. It's just, it's all up in here. And so, you know, again, why, why do we, uh, why do we struggle with awareness? And, and as Cassie was sharing too, uh, again, we get seduced away Mm -hmm. from transforming moments with God. Yes. And, and what are those things that seduce us away? Past concerns, future concerns, and even current situations, Absolutely. right, Cassie? Absolutely. You know, think about the past, those things that you've been through, that you've experienced, that never got resolved. Mm-hmm. Those things, like you, all of a sudden, you start thinking about those things. You're in your quiet time, you're in your prayer time, and all of a sudden, you start thinking about those past events yes. that never got an answer, never got resolved, and so, um, so they're weighing heavy on us. We're constantly rehearsing in (laughs) our minds Mm -hmm. the scenario. Mm -hmm. If it never got resolved, when we only got a piece of the puzzle, we start creating this monster that just doesn't even exist around the whole situation. And then all of a sudden it just balloons into this huge thing that makes us feel like, oh my gosh, you know, this, it's the world's going to end because (laughs) of it. Mm -hmm. And so, and so we get distracted by those past um, concerns and also even the future. You know, you think about, uh, you know, is, I know we're in a current situation, but that causes us to be, have anxiety about future concerns. Like, is this the end of the world? Uh, 
what will life be like now? Uh, from now on, will things ever go back to normal? What will the future be for my children? And so then, again, even that begins to uh, to snowball. And, and also current situations. Yeah. Now, this is something that I just got this revelation of just in the last seven weeks. <laughs> and, you know, I was so excited that we were home more and we were able to we were being able to do a lot more projects at home. And so I realized that, uh, and I shared this with Todd, with the stay-at-home order, uh, we, we have become so busy catching up on projects that we were too busy to, to do before the, the pandemic started that we basically just changed one form of busyness for another. So true. So we're distracted. Mm -hmm. We're distracted by this opportun by this opportunity mm -hmm. to really learn awareness and focus on God, <laughs> right? Yeah. And um and so we've traded one form of busy busyness for another. But um man, I felt this just really um was so powerful when I felt like the Lord showed it to me. But but uh I'm going to read it to you twice because it's good stuff. <laughs> Okay, and it says this, awareness of God in the present moment helps us be more mindful of his presence and therefore positions us to experience him in such a way that it leads us to a deeper understanding of his love for us and connection with him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Think about that. Yeah. Awareness of God in the present moment, his present here and now, with you and me, right. and with Doug behind the camera, <laughs> God's presence is here with yeah, us. That's right. And it, if we would just be more mindful of his presence, that will position us to experience him in such a way that it leads to a deeper understanding of what? Of his love for us. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily yeah. his provisions for us, his love for us. That's yeah. That's what we're all, that's what he's all about. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about his love for us. He did everything he did because of his love for us. Yeah. And so it, when we are aware of his presence, it leads us to a deeper understanding of how much he really truly loves us. Okay. And it brings us to a closer connection with him. And so, you know, uh, again, this stuff is not new. Um, it's something that was taught to me by some very godly people, and I I appreciate it. And I've always felt like I've had a um, I've had a pretty good ability to be aware of my surroundings, but this has really um, helped me to just really tap into another level of awareness of God's presence. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to talk about um, in the next few minutes, it's just three simple things simple simple things like it's it's not profound it's so simple but so powerful when we when we apply it to our lives and and what i've been, i've been taught that it was called the 3 r's and so we're going to talk about three three r practices that position us to have a greater awareness of god's presence not even just in your day-to-day -day activity, but in your moment-to-moment -moment mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. If you can really just pay attention moment by moment, you can be uh, become more aware of God's presence in your life. And so again, they're simple but powerful. And so number one, the first R is rest. Now, um, what does this mean? Most of us don't have a clue what that word means <laughs> because we don't know how to rest, right? Right. And yeah. so this is what resting is. Resting is, uh, it, it really is resting in his presence. And whenever I refer to the three R's, I'm referring to really being able to put this in, in practice, even in, in speci well, specifically in your private, in your, um, your quiet time with the mm -hmm. Lord, but, um, but you can do it just in, any any time you put this into practice, it, it's helpful. Yeah. But specifically uh, tonight, I want to encourage you to begin to to use it in your quiet time with the Lord. So rest, resting in His presence. And um, I think of the scripture in Matthew chapter eleven, verses twenty eight through thirty. And I love the Amplified version. It says, "Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened." by religious rituals that provide no peace. 
and I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, following me as my disciple. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When, when we're talking about rest, rest is a position of surrender to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. A position of surrender to the Holy Spirit that we must take so that he can nurture an intimate relationship between you and God or, or me and God right. or us and God, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, what I love about resting is it's not performance driven. Yeah. yeah. I love that. It's yeah. not performance driven. Right. It's surrendering. It's a letting go, uh, of, of what you want to do and, and how you want to do it to the Holy Spirit and letting the Holy Spirit nurture that relationship between you and God. Mm -hmm. So that, that third party, the God, the Holy Spirit, involved in in our quiet time with the Lord. That's what resting is all about. You know, I was thinking about the story of uh, Martha and Mary in in Luke chapter 10. You can read about you can read it later. But um there's there's some key words that Jesus spoke to Martha. You know, of course, you know the story. Jesus came over to hang out with Martha and Mary. Um, they didn't have to practice social distancing at the time, so so that was cool. Jesus was at my house, and so um, and so he was there, and he was visiting with them. And Mary was sitting right at the feet of Jesus, and and Martha was cooking and cleaning and preoccupied um, with taking care of Jesus, right? Instead of allowing Jesus to take care of her. So she was just busy in that performance mode. She was um, allowing her preoccupation to hijack her time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Unlike Mary, who was sitting at his feet, enjoying his presence in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Jesus was in their presence at that moment in time. And you have Martha all running around, distracted and busy. And you have Mary taking advantage of the moment, the present moment with Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, Martha's time with Jesus was performance driven. Mary's time with Jesus was surrendered. So resting is surrendering to the Holy Spirit so that he can nurture um, our time with the Lord and our relationship with the Lord. And this is what Jesus told Martha. He said, Martha, Martha, you're, you're worried about so many things. One thing is necessary. Mm -hmm. One thing is necessary. Rest. Yeah. One thing. And Mary is doing it. And so it's important that in our quiet time that we understand what is really rest. It's, um, it's, it's not performance driven. It's, it's grace driven. It's mercy driven. It's a surrendering and letting God have his time with us. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Can I say something? Yes. Okay, so uh, it made me think of there's some women that I have talked to over this um, this time of stay the stay at home order and and they're busy working. There there are medical professionals out there, there are um, essential workers, you know, just all these people, not just women, but I've talked to the women who are working more. And I'm just thinking that right now, as you're saying, talking, as you're talking about rest, that some women are like, I don't have time to rest. Yeah. I have to get from here to get to there. I have to, yeah. then I get home and I have the kids and I have cooking and, and all that stuff. And, you know, I, I recently was talking to a friend of mine and from the time she leaves work to the time she gets home, she's by herself. She's got 15 to 20 minutes. And what I really was trying to encourage her to do, and I really think that this was the Holy Spirit, I was like, well, take that time when you're by yourself. For some of us, it's just when you're, you know, maybe when you're cooking or when you go outside to water the garden or you're in the car, you know, going from here to there. We could practice that rest 
when we have those moments in the tub. I mean, whatever, you know, we, we, ha- we can have moments, whether it's five minutes or, um, I don't know, maybe you're going to say this later, but, yeah. um, I just think of my yeah, sweet friend good. and many of you who are so busy. And I, what I encourage her to do is take that time and yes. break it up. I'm like, yes. why don't you take, you know, a few minutes? This is what I told her. I said, take a few minutes till you get to a certain destination. And unload your day before the Lord. Just, oh Lord, I'm, I didn't finish this. I didn't finish that. Like, okay, unload. And then from like this point to this point in your car, why don't you pray? And then from this point to this point, get quiet. Then this point to this point, thank the Lord for what he's done and whatever, whatever. Um, however you want to arrange that, but this rest that, you know, Tanya's talking about is so crucial. But we can find time yes. to, to do this. And even though we have busy, busyness, busy times, people all over, I really, really believe it's 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 so possible Absolutely. to find the time to do that. Absolutely. That's so good. That's so good. And if you think about it, it takes the practice of awareness to know that there is time for you to set aside. Like Cassie was saying, you're in your car. If you're aware that you are in your car alone, you can spend that time with the Lord. Yeah. yeah. You can put some worship music on. You can rest in your car. Yes, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But we are so distracted with future concerns. I got to get to work and get this done. Or I got to get home so I can clean the house and cook for the children. You're going to miss the opportunity of you having this this quiet time in your car because you were so distracted by past and future concerns yeah. and you missed out on it exactly yeah 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 it's good. good thank you Cassie uh-huh. that's good it's good sharing okay so number number one is rest the first R the second R is receive mm-hmm. receive this is receiving his love receiving God's love this is the practice of listening to what God is communicating mm-hmm. to you yeah. right not necessarily of what he's telling you to do about a situation as much as it is him telling you how he feels about you mm-hmm. and his thoughts towards you. Yes. I mean, we have a, we have a million things, uh, questions and issues in our lives that we need answers for. But really what we really need to know is how much the Lord loves us. Okay. And he wants, he wants, the, he wants to t- give us answers to our questions. But he also wants to tell us how much he loves us. He wants to communicate that. That's where intimacy comes in. And so we, we can, we can have all the answers to every problem and, and all the solutions from God to every problem that we, that we have in life. But if we don't have, um, have the experience of how much he loves us, then it's it's it be, becomes just a transactional mm-hmm. relationship mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. not an intimate relationship yeah. and so more than god, more than god wants to answer give us answers to our 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 questions and prayers and but more than anything he wants he wants to tell us how he feels about us and he wants to tell us what he thinks about us and and um he wants us to receive his love and and you know sometimes we can't hear what God is saying to us because we're too busy talking over him. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Or we're too busy cutting him off. Have you ever been in a conversation where you're talking to somebody and they just they hijack the conversation, they just cut you off and they start talking about what they want to say or what so basically what they're telling you is that they were looking at you, but they weren't listening to right. you. They were thinking about what they wanted right. to say. And it just so happened it started coming out of their mouths and they couldn't control yeah. it. And so they weren't really listening to you at all. Right. I've been so guilty about that. Yeah, me but too. We, we tend to do that. We, In our minds, we think, well, God, you don't hear me and you're not listening to me. And God is saying, no, that's not the problem. You're not listening to me. Yes. I'm here and I'm listening, but you're not listening to me. And I'm trying to tell you something. Have you ever thought or said that? Can you please just let me finish? (laughs) And God is sometimes saying, Tanya, let me finish. Just stop. Receive. Quit, quit going through the Rolodex of problems. Just (laughs) slow your roll, you know? Right. And so receiving is, is listening to God. Again, 
We can't hear what he's saying if we're too, too busy talking over him or cutting him off all the time. And, and that's where I, um, I felt like the Lord was uh, wanting us to revisit this awareness yeah. of his presence topic. Right. Um, because just last week, that very thing was happening to me. I was going through a rough patch, you know, like we all do. And I was in my quiet time and I was, of course, giving my list of grievances to the Lord about all the things that I was going through. And, and I was just, you know, so it started on Monday and I got in my quiet time and I was like, Lord, I'm going through this and I'm going through that. And this person doesn't understand me and they don't care and this and that. And so, and then I, and so I, I prayed, I cried, um, I wiped my tears, I listened to my music, read my Bible, I got up, went about the day, nothing changed. I was still in the mully grubs. So then Tuesday rolls around. Same scenario happens. I'm not going to get into it again, but the exact same scenario happens. Lord this, Lord that, blah, 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 blah. I leave my quiet time, nothing, nothing happens. Same mully grubs. So finally, on Wednesday, um, I was in my quiet time and I was reading and I felt like I finally decided I was going to listen <laughs> this time. And so the, um, the Lord led me to revisit a book that I was reading about quiet time and these three R's. And, and so I began to, uh, read, review and back the, the three R's. And whenever I got to the receive and it was talking about how, um, you know, it's about listening to God. All of a sudden, the Lord reminded me, even though um, at the time I didn't think he was speaking to me because I think because I was too busy listening to my own voice in my head, mm -hmm. but he was still speaking to me. Um, I just, I didn't notice it. I wasn't aware of it, mm -hmm. but he reminded me. And I love that, mm -hmm. that even though he's talking to us and we not listening, that later on down the road, he will remind mm -hmm. us. And then all of a sudden, our spiritual ears are open and we hear. So we go from having eyes that do not see and ears that do not hear to all of a sudden, eyes that see and ears that hear. All along, he was there talking to yeah, us. Yeah. And uh -huh. so he was saying, Tanya, when you were saying, Lord, they don't, they don't care about me. All, all the whole time he was saying, yes, but Tanya, I care. Mm -hmm. And I would say, Lord, they don't understand. And he would say, yes, but I understand. And I would say, Lord, he do, they, they don't love me. And he would say, yeah, but I love you. And so all these times when I was focused on, uh, Lord, what they don't, what they're not doing, God is saying, yes, but I do. Whenever I was saying they don't, God was saying, yes, but I do. And when he opened up my ears to hear that, my ears opened, it's like all of a sudden I had this huge relief and I was free. Mm -hmm. Like it was like literally night and day. Mm -hmm. And I told Todd about it and he was relieved because, <laughs> you know, he was tired of living under my cloud too. You know, it was like, it was a rainy day in the Menard household and I was, I was the cloud, you know? And so, um, so it was just a huge breakthrough yeah. just because I decided to listen. Mm -hmm. Not because he decided to speak, but because I decided to listen. Okay. And so this is the cool part. Verse John chapter one and verse three. I love this scripture. It says, how great is the love the father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. We are the children of God, and he has so much love to lavish on us. Yes. The reason that God can lavish his love on us is because he's not distracted. Yeah. See, when, we're, when we are aware, when we're not distracted, we have more to offer. And when we're not uh, distracted, we have even more to receive. So the reason that God can lavish his love on us is because he's not distracted. Yeah. He's aware of us. Yeah. He's aware that this pandemic is going on, but he knows that even beyond this pandemic that we are going through personal things, personal issues that have nothing to do with the pandemic. Right, right. So he can even look beyond the surface of this, of this physical pandemic to what's happening in our in our spirit man, are the spiritual pandemic that we're going through. And that's what I love about God. Mm -hmm. So it's about receiving his love. Yes. Yeah? Yes. 
Did yeah. you want to yeah, share something? Yeah, yeah. Okay, real quick. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, when I think about this, I think about my own experience in my in my life and my time from receiving with the Lord. And I just think it's funny, but also um, we need to know that sometimes we go into our time with the Lord expecting Him to maybe tell us one thing or yeah. expecting for him to show us one thing. And so many times for myself, when I go into that time with the Lord and I'm just like, Lord, I'm quiet now. Please speak. He like says something that initially may seem like it doesn't have anything to do with my situation. And I'm like, is that really what you're saying? Mm-hmm. And then as I just just stop and, and just continue to receive, he it, it so makes sense. Yes. And so just to encourage y'all tonight and from my own experience that when we are open to the Lord, he, we may have this, like she said, she went in there with this, this situation and God spoke to her. Well, sometimes he speaks to us and it has nothing to do with that, yes. but it's something, a core longing, yes. a core need that we had that That's we right. didn't even know we had. And he's just like, he That's just right. speaks because he's faithful. And so right. we don't want to ever get in a box where we think God should speak a certain way. Like, got to use scripture, God. You know, I need you to use scripture when you're speaking to me when I'm receiving. No, no. <laughs> no, we, we, when we are in a posture to receive, we need to be ready to just receive whatever he has. It may be a scripture. It may be something someone told us the day yes. before or two years before. Uh, it may be something he's been speaking all along that we weren't quite listening for. So I just, yeah. w- concerning receiving, yeah. just want to encourage y'all with, with that. Yeah, that's good. I, I heard a story and I had a similar experience with what I was just sharing about what happened to me this week that... um we can have the answer to the problem. Uh, God's got all the answers. He can give it to us or whatever. But here's the, here's the cool part is that we, we can have questions and we can have situations in our life where we need an answer and we're crying out to God. We think we need an answer <laughs> and we're crying out for an answer and God never gives us an answer to our prayer. But when we strip it all down, and all we end up at the end of the of the situation is Jesus and his love for us. Mm-hmm. That's really all we needed to begin with. Yeah. We just needed him to be yeah. there for us. Yes. And that's what happened to me. I didn't really need an answer. I thought I, that I thought I needed. I really just needed a touch from the presence of God. I needed his love in my life. I needed his his presence with me. And 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 that's what uh, helped me that's what helped me get through I st- and and so you 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 may still be looking for answers for certain things in your life and and believe god for them i'm not saying don't just don't just sweep it under the rug and move on you can still believe god to provide an answer and provide a way but don't don't seek that first mm-hmm. seek his presence mm-hmm. first mm-hmm. seek his heart towards you first and then later, maybe the hand will come and later you will understand why that was delayed. But we, more than anything in our lives, we need his presence more than his provision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so number two is received. And then the third, the third R is just really simply respond. And that is responding to his love. So when he, when he, speaks to us and he tells us his thoughts towards us and and all of a sudden we get all these all these feels within us and all these emotions rise up emotions make us want to either react or respond right Mm -hmm. when we have emotional upheaval we want to react when we have emotions that are that are driven by the holy spirit and that are touching our lives we want to respond and so part of a relationship Part of connecting intimacy, um, an intimate relationship is re- receiving and responding. It's a back mm-hmm. and forth, right? And so when the Lord speaks to you, you respond, whatever's in your life, whatever's in your heart. So there's, it, it really is very simple. It's whatever you're feeling to do, mm-hmm. whether it's worship, maybe prayer or praise, maybe adoration are a simple thank you, God, mm-hmm. be giving him thanks. Um, 
having a conversation with him, right? Thank you, Lord. That was so good. I really needed that. Mm -hmm. But just responding back to the Lord. And um, it, that's the simple that's the simple R of respond. Just mm -hmm. telling him how you feel about him, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything you wanted to share? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to move on. Um, Again, God is not looking for a transaction with us. He wants an intimate relationship with us. You know, we were created for spiritual, uh, for intimacy. We were created for intimacy with God. All right. It's, um, it's part of our spiritual DNA. Mm -hmm. It's in every single one of us. And, and it's important for us to nurture that relationship with God. Uh, social distancing has kept us from a degree of connection and intimacy with some family, some friends, with our church, with our community, but it will never keep us away from closeness to God. That's right. It, will, it doesn't have to do that. We, we are not meeting in this church building, but God is, is, is not solely located here. That's right. He's, he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. Mm -hmm. He's everywhere. He's with you now. Yeah. His presence has been with you this whole 45 minutes that we've been, we've been sharing. Mm -hmm. He's been sitting right next to you and you might, you may not have even noticed that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've been told that, uh, to given a stay at home order and that we should only go out for essentials, right? Only go out for essentials. But as Christians, we need to remember this, the scripture that says, um, it's in Ephesians chapter one and verse three, and it says, praise be to the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ, mm -hmm. yes. every spiritual blessing in Christ, everything essential he has already provided for us. It's already been given to us. And this is what, like, whenever I saw that, I just got this revelation of, of connecting it to the current days and the stay-at-home order and going out for essentials. God the Father is our essential. Yes. He's everything we need. Yes. God the Son is the supplier of everything we need, Right? He's the one who provided the way for us. Yeah. He's the supplier of everything we need. God, the Holy Spirit, is the essential worker who helps to keep the spiritual shelves stocked and lets us know when supplies are running low. That's so good. Isn't that good? Yeah, I like that. And so you think about that, the Trinity, the Godhead. It's our, he's our source for healing the spiritual pandemic inside of us. Yeah. We are living in a physical pandemic. It's worldwide. Mm -hmm. It's not just here in Lafayette, right? It's, it's a pandemic. It's worldwide. It's a physical one. And, and there's a lot of us, uh, a lot of people out there. You have, you have different, different, uh, groups. You have people who are doing really well right now spiritually in their walk with God. And that's awesome. And you have people who are kind of up and down. And they're having good moments and they're have, having bad moments. But there, are, there, there is a spiritual pandemic in the world as well. Mm -hmm. And so wherever you are, wh wh whatever category that you might fall into, you just need to know that, that God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Godhead is our source for healing the spiritual pandemic inside of us. And so what, no matter what degree of, of pandemic that that the physical one is affecting us, we're all having to work together, right, to mm -hmm. take the necessary precautions. So we're all having to practice social distancing. We're all having to practice uh, um, washing our hands and 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 certain things, right? Whether we're whether we're sick or we're not sick, no matter the degree that this physical pandemic is is upon us. It's the same way with, with, uh, with the spiritual pandemic. We must always, we must always be aware of God's presence and put into practice awareness of Him in our lives so that we can stay spiritually healthy and whole. Right? right? And so, um, 
The only way that we can, there's a solution for the physical pandemic, but the only way that we're going to cure the spiritual pandemic is that we need a spiritual awakening to cure it. We need transformational experiences with God that demand present moment awareness. Mm -hmm. Transformational experiences. But those experiences demand present moment awareness. Mm -hmm. We need to work on our awareness. Right. Yeah. Right. And so we're going to close tonight. And um, we want to just uh, spend maybe ten, seven to ten minutes in prayer. Um, and we're going we're gonna to put into practice the three R's. And I'm going to lead you in prayer. Um, if you're not already in a quiet space like Cassie talked about earlier, and it's possible to do so, uh, you can, if you don't mind, just excuse yourself from your family or wherever for about seven to ten minutes. Um, go to a quiet place in your home. You might have a nice place outside. Uh, maybe you need to go in your closet or your bedroom or the bathroom. Or if your family wants to do this to, this uh, this prayer time together, that's fine too. But really, we just want you to, like Cassie said, um, find somewhere that you can be alone with the Lord. Even if there's a person present, you can make that happen. Mm -hmm. Just uh, be aware of that. And um, and we're gonna start to play some instrumental music just to kind of help help you silence the internal noise and cultivate stillness in your life. Again, that's the practice of awareness. It's a cultivating right. of, of, of stillness. Mm -hmm. It's practicing stillness. It's practicing quietness. It's very hard for us to do these days. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of practice. But once you can get a hold of it and you can experience the benefits of it, it just makes it easier for you to uh, to find that time. And so whenever you're, you're there, um, I want to give you an opportunity to just to find that place. But I want you to, um, if you don't mind, just close your eyes. Just close your eyes right now. Quiet yourself. And invite the Holy Spirit to come and be present with you. A simple prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, you're welcome to be present with me. And as you quiet yourself, keep your eyes closed. I want you to begin to contemplate this scripture. And I'm going to read it to you. It's in Psalm 46, verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And now as you enter into the first position of rest in his presence, I want you to think about the invitation of Jesus when he said, come to me and I will give you rest. Let those words go deep into your soul. Come to me and I will give you rest. He's given you permission to rest. Give yourself permission to. Listen to his invitation to rest in his presence. Surrender. Let go of whatever is weighing on you. No more striving or performing. Let go of your anxious care. There's nothing to prove. There's nothing to do. You're at home. Just stay there and rest.
Now we're going to move into the next position of receive. Receive his love. What is he saying to you about his thoughts towards you? Is he saying, you are my child. You are my delight. I love you with an unconditional love, an everlasting love. Nothing's going to separate you from my love. Maybe he's just saying, I hear you, my daughter. I see you, my son. Maybe he's reminding you of something that he's already said to you before. And now all of a sudden your, your spiritual ears are open and you hear What is he saying to you? How does it make you feel? his arms around you. Since his love. And now whenever you're ready, respond to his love. Whatever response is in you, let it out. If it's praise and worship, it might be tears, it might be laughter, it might be saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for not requiring me to do anything to receive your love. It's already been provided for me. I receive it, Lord. You may... You may need to say, Lord, I receive your love and I receive salvation. You may be watching this from home and you've never really actually surrendered your life before. You've never even entered into rest because you've never surrendered your life at all, anything to the Lord. And so this may be the first time that you're actually surrendering your life to the Lord. And so I want to encourage you to receive his salvation, receive his forgiveness, and respond to it and say, Lord, I, I thank you for saving me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord, I will follow you. Yes, Lord, I open up my heart to you. Whatever the Lord is speaking to you, just respond to it. Father, we just come to you right now in the strong and precious and powerful name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that through your Son, Jesus Christ, all of the spiritual blessings have been provided for us. And we thank you, Jesus, for the work that you have done on the cross, that we might have the privilege and the honor and the opportunity to be able to have that permission to experience the presence of God in our lives. We thank you, Jesus, for making that way for us, that we can experience your presence. Thank you, Father, for your grace in our lives. And Lord, we just pray, Cassie and I just pray for your people, God. We pray for those who are dealing with this pandemic that it may have been, is touching some people really, really close to home. Lord, I pray for your grace and your comfort over them. 
Lord, we pray for people who are, who are crying out to you right now, God, that you would just manifest your presence in, in their lives, that you would open up the windows of heaven and, and lavish your love upon them, God. Reassure them, God, that you are there, that you hear them, that you see them, that you, that you are not, um, you are not distracted by the pandemic, Lord. You, you know exactly what's going on in their lives. And Lord, I pray that you give them grace, God, to enter into a position of rest so that they can hear you, God. Lord, I had, there's no question and no doubt in my mind that you may have already spoken to them or you're waiting to speak to them. But Lord, I pray that grace would be upon them to enter into the position of rest, God, so that your Holy Spirit can have his way in our lives. We thank you for this night, God. I thank you for this time, God. And I thank you, Lord God, that there will come a day that we will celebrate the love and the faithfulness of Jesus, not, not only in, in each other's physical presence, but Father, that we can do it together in each other's presence, in the presence of God, and that we will be able to, uh, to reconnect on every level that you have called the body of Christ to connect. Lord, your word does not return void, and it does not fail. And so, Lord, I just thank you, God, that there will come a day that we will be together again as you have created the church and the body of Christ to be. I thank you, Father, for your grace that is sufficient for us. I thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning. I thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I thank you that Jesus, Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, is in charge of our lives. And not one tear will fall to the ground. But Lord, that you have caught every tear in the palm of your hand and you hold them dear. There's not one thing that you uh, that has happened in our lives that you are not aware of. So Father, as you are aware of us, help us to be more aware of you. That we might connect with you on a level that you desire us to connect with you, God. Lord, I pray for a, a, an awakening, a spiritual awakening in our spirit man, uh, and a, rev, a revival in our spirit man, wherever we are um, in our walk with you, God. Give us more. Give us more. Light a greater fire in us, God, to to want to be with you, God, more than anything else in the world. You are all we need. You are our essential God. You are our essential, and anything else is 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 um, is just a a substitute, God, for happiness and joy and peace and success and victory. Lord, you are are our essential, and we thank you for that, God. We thank you, God, that you love us that much. You love us that much. We praise your name. We give you glory and honor, and Lord. We do have a reason to celebrate life. Lord, we celebrate you. Yes. We celebrate you yes. tonight. We thank you, Father, thank you, that the Jesus. work that you've done in our lives, that you are sealing it by the blood of Jesus yes. and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy in our lives. In the strong and powerful and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. How was that, Cassie? Well, that was very refreshing. Did you so receive refreshing. something from the Lord? I did. I did. It was pretty cool. Um, so I have a couple projects that I'm working on right now, um, and they require work and they require time, and I'm very excited about them. Um, and so I, when you started talking about rest and I just started to quiet myself, it's like I almost could see myself just like laying those projects at the cross. Mm. You know, as you come in, as I came in to rest and to just, because they're, they're, like I said, they, they're, they're work. <laughs> and, um, and so I just like, just imagine, okay, Lord, I'm laying that down so I can rest. Cause when I'm thinking about it and working on it, 
there's no rest there. You know, there's, there's work. And so as I did that, I just felt like I laid that down before the Lord at the cross. And then as we moved into the, the, the receiving part, I really felt like the, the Lord said that if these projects are, if these projects are a success, He's not going to love me any more than He already does. Oh. And if I don't complete them, because I am kind of known to do that, but if I don't, if I don't complete them or they don't do what I want them to do and have the impact that I want them to have, the impact that I want them to have, He's not going to love me any less. Wow, awesome. And so I just, that's mm. what I got out of that. That's awesome. So when we moved to uh, respond, all I could do was say thank you because I know I can be performance driven sometimes. It's something I've dealt with for years. And so for me personally, um, that was just a relief. And so I feel very refreshed no, cool. <laughs> after that, awesome. that time. So thank you for leading us yes, into that. Thank you for sharing cool. that. Um, that was so good. I needed that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Cassie. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Well, ladies, gentlemen, <laughs> kids, teenagers, whoever's watching, thank you for spending time with us. Yes. We love you. Yes. We can never love you more than God loves you. He will always love us more than anybody else will. But we do love you with a great deep love. And we look forward to being able to be with you to actually having a ladies conference, yes. to being able to get back uh, to the normal uh, life at church and fellowship and worship. However, we don't want to get back to the normalness of unawareness right. and busyness yeah. and distraction, right? So I hope that tonight was helpful for you. I hope that you would take the these simple tools and and continue to put them into practice um, and, uh, and see what God does. Um, see, uh, see what He does with, uh, with His relationship with you. Um, any, anything else you want to share before we say goodbye? No, right. I'm good. All that right. was good. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Real quick, um, if you prayed the prayer of salvation with us tonight, we, um, we have some things linked to this uh, this time tonight, there's a connect card link where you can fill out information. If you need a Bible, we can get a Bible to you. We can get you whatever you need. There's prayer card. If you uh, uh, link that, if you have a prayer request, uh, let us know what your yeah. prayer requests are, and we'll, we'll pray for you. Um, and then, and then also, of course, the giving um, the giving link. If you ha need to pay your tithe, or you feel like the Lord is leading you to give an offering of some sort. So um, we just thank you so much. We appreciate, We even though I can't see you, like I'm looking into a camera right now. And so I'm imagining that I'm looking into the eyes of God's people, even though I can't see you. I just want to let you know how much Todd and I and Brandon and Cassie appreciate the body of Christ. Yeah. That you guys love us enough to stay connected with us. Yeah. Even though this room is empty with the exception of Cassie Nine, Doug, sweet Doug. <laughs> He's been doing a lot of work and we appreciate him. Mm -hmm. But we appreciate you and we love y'all so much. Mm -hmm. And we can't wait to um, to celebrate reunion. Oh, yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You, know, you guys and gals and everyone else have just have a great night and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Night. Good night.